Hey, this is Jeremy from Shine Insurance, and today we're gonna to talk about how a workers' comp audit works. Man, these are kind of tough, and if you don't know what's happening, you feel confused, you feel frustrated, you don't understand why these insurance company people are asking you all these questions. We're gonna solve all of that in this short video right now. We're gonna explain how it works so you're prepared and tell you some tricks and tips to make sure that your audits go super well and you understand exactly what's going on. So what will we address in this video? Well, we'll start with what's workers' comp, a very simple explanation, and then we'll talk about what is a work comp audit. Third, we'll talk about why and when, why, why it happens and when it will happen. And then I think the, the best part is the four ways to make sure that every audit is smooth, to make sure that when you do have a work comp audit, you have a smooth experience and it works out great for you. Uh, let's start with what is workers' compensation insurance. Very simply, it is insurance coverage for the injuries that could happen to your employees. If you have employees, it's possible that they could get hurt. If you have an office, it's not highly possible. There's a low likelihood. If you're a contractor and people are working with hammers and saws and things like that, there's a much more high likelihood that people can get hurt. But when people get hurt at your workplace, when you're the employer, you are responsible essentially for those injuries and workers' compensation protects you in that situation. So that's what it is. And uh, so how is the price figured? Well, the price is figured using two basic factors. The first one is the type of work each employee does. So I just explained this. You know, if you are an office worker, then the price for your workers' compensation insurance should be, you know, fairly low. I have an insurance agency. The price for my work comp insurance is fairly low because it's an office situation. If you're a contractor and you have sort of high risk situations going on, then your price is going to be higher for workers' compensation insurance because it's more likely that somebody gets hurt, right? So kind of makes sense. The second is the payroll that the employee receives. So that's really the two pieces that figure the price of your uh, workers' compensation insurance. So how do you set it? Up. Well, at the beginning of the year, you sit down with your independent insurance agent and estimate, and that word estimate is going to come up over and over again in this video, estimate what payroll you'll have and how to classify each employee. So you sit down with your insurance agent and you say, well, I've got one office worker who's you know working a certain amount of time and uh, the payroll for her is going to be $40,000 a year and I have you know, a construction worker and she's making, you know, $50,000 a year, so on and so forth. And your insurance agent is going to help you put all that together and create different classifications for your different employees so that you can properly set them up. So you, you set it all up, you get an estimated price, and then you set up a payment structure based off of that estimate. So you make payments ba based off the estimate uh, here's an example. Let's look at this example. So let's say that Bob's tax service has 10 employees who are classified as office workers. So each employee makes $40,000 a year. Okay, fair enough. And so if there's 10 of them, then the workers' comp rate would be figured using $400,000 in the office worker payroll. So that makes sense. Now, if the premium was $10 per $1,000 in payroll, and different insurance companies have different premium amounts, different coverage amounts for your work comp would create different premiums, but let's just use this example. If the premium was $10 per $1,000 in payroll, then the estimate would be $4,000 a year. Pretty nice even numbers for us here. Um, so Bob would then set up a payment schedule using the estimate of $4,000 a year. So if he wanted to split that into a monthly amount, he would pay you know $334 a month, and it would uh, come out to be right in the end. Okay, so that's great. Bob is paying you know a monthly amount. It's going to add up to $4,000 at the end of the year. He's done. He understands what his work comp situation is, right? Well, no, not really. Here's the most important thing to understand. Your final annual workers' compensation premium is based on your actual payroll for that year and the actual jobs that people did. At the beginning of the year, you create an estimate. You say, I think they're going to make about this amount of money, and I think they're going to be doing these jobs. You describe those two things at the beginning as an estimate. But at the end, you're, it's going to be like an audit situation, and they're going to look at your situation and say, okay, what was the actual payroll? 
and the actual jobs that people did. And that's what messes people up because if at the beginning you think that, oh, well, I, it's going to be $4,000 a year for my workers' compensation premium, and you don't remember that's an estimate, then it can burn you at the end. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to fix that. But So it's based on your actual payroll and the actual jobs that people did. It's it's pretty much how, you know, a lot of income taxes work, right? So you figure yourself in an income tax bracket and then maybe you have a certain amount of taxes pulled out of your paycheck if as a um, business owner you've, you know, you set yourself up as an employee or maybe you're just setting aside a certain amount of money to pay for your taxes. And then at the end of the year, they look at how much you actually made and then you have to pay your taxes based off of that. And if you guessed low on your your estimates, the money you set aside, then you have more money to pay out. And if you guessed high, then you're going to get a refund. And workers' comp insurance is the exact same way. And so at the end, we're going to figure out what happened there. Um, so a work comp audit is simply when a represent representative of the insurance company contacts you and audits your financials with the goal of figuring out what you actually should have paid. So this is going to be a represent from, representative of the insurance company. It's somebody you don't know. It's not like your local insurance agent gives you a call and says, hey, I need to do your work comp audit. We need to make a time where I can look at your books. And you're like, look at my books. Like, look at my financials. Who is this person who wants to look at my financials, right? And it can make people feel really defensive and confused. And, you know, understanding it is the most important part. This is just someone who's coming in and trying to look at the real numbers to figure out what you should pay for your work comp insurance. So that's what's happening there. If you paid too much, if they figure out that you paid too much, the insurance company is going to send you a refund. So if you overestimated, then you're going to end up getting a refund back. And that's a great thing. It feels good, right? If you didn't pay enough, then they send you a bill. And that always feels kind of crummy because you're like, wait a minute, I thought I already paid my insurance, but you didn't pay enough. Your estimate was too low. And so they're going to send you a bill. So that's kind of the two things that could happen there. Let's go back to our Bob example. If Bob's audit, remember he decided that his total payroll for his office workers was $400,000, right? So if his audit showed that his actual payroll was $360,000, which is $40,000 less, then and, and all of his employees were properly classified as office workers, that we didn't have any classification issues, then he would receive a $400 refund because it was $10 per thousand for his premium, and he was $40,000 under, so a $400 refund. Um, so that's great for Bob. He gets a refund at the end. He, he did a great job of overestimating so that he would get a refund. Um, but in this example now, if he had estimated... 400,000 and then it had actually been 440,000 then it would be the reverse so he would get a bill for 400 because his payroll was higher than his estimate so we always want to kind of overestimate mate so that we're not burned on those things so why do insurance companies do audit audits maybe this is obvious by the time we get to this point in the video but yeah audits are super annoying I mean, there's nobody wants to have some stranger come in and look at your financials of your business. You know, it stinks, right? But it really is the only way that the company can verify that you're actually paying what you should for your insurance. The insurance is set up, whether we like it that way or not, that's kind of a different conversation, but the insurance is set up based on your payroll and the fact that your employees are classified for the right jobs. So the auditor is simply coming in to verify those things. And that's why that happens. So when does it happen? Well, an audit generally happens about a month or two after the annual policy term is up. So whatever your policy term is, everybody has a different policy term, but whatever your policy term is, about a month later, you may receive a call and someone wants to come out and do a work comp audit uh, for you. That's going to happen after the policy is done. So that's generally when an audit happens. And um, it can it can really make you mad sometimes because it feels like, especially if you underestimated and end up getting a bill, by the time you get that bill, it's like four months after the term that the bill is for, right? It's like way past the year that you're actually paying for. So you get th this bill for you know, $400 if you're Bob or, or whatever, and you're looking at it, and as you come to understand, it's like, wait a minute, this was for last year, and it is absolutely for last year, and that's why it can be frustrating. But understanding that, again, is what all the, what this video is all about, 
And uh, so hopefully you'll understand that a little bit better. All right, let's talk about four ways to make every audit smooth. And the first one is to connect with your insurance agent every quarter. So you just want to check in. It doesn't have to be some big sit down meeting or anything like that. Obviously, if you want to sit down with your insurance agent, they should be willing to do that. But, you know, you could just take the time to check in. Hey, you know, where does my work comp policy say I'm at on payroll? And then look at your actual books, QuickBooks or whatever you use and see if that's where you actually are at, you know, on payroll. If if you estimated that after quarter one, you would have spent $20,000 on payroll, and it turns out you've spent $40,000 on payroll, well, it's best to adjust the policy at, at the end of quarter one so that you're paying a little bit more over time, but you don't get nailed with that audit at the end. So you want to check in with your agent every quarter and just say, hey, here's what's going on with my payroll. Here's what's going on with the people working for me. Does this match the the policy that we have set up? And your agent should be able to show you that and tell you what's going on there. So that's that's really good. So tell them about any changes in your payroll estimate and changes in the jobs that your employees are doing. Again, those are the two things that work comp insurance is based on. Number two is keep crazy good books. There's lots of reasons to keep crazy good books. One of them is your work comp audit. The better books you have, the better your, your setup and they're organized and all that kind of stuff, the easier it is for the auditor to come in and look, which makes them feel really good and much more likely to just kind of breeze over and make sure you know, all is good, all is well. So simple things, have your payroll registers clean. If you have any 1099 independent contractors, you should definitely talk with your insurance agent about them, the way they, their relationship with work comp is kind of its own thing. So if you do have 1099 independent contractors, you want to make sure uh, you have those noted when an auditor stops by, but also talk to your agent about them. And then just have your quarterly tax reports. Again, if, if your books are clean, then you shouldn't have any problems being able to really knock it out of the park in an audit situation and show them what's going on. Number three, know your employee class codes. This is one of the two things that work comp insurance is based on. You know, if you're in an office or something like that, it's likely pretty straightforward and not that hard. But where it gets more complicated is if you are a contractor, you know, or if you have multiple different kinds of people working. Maybe you have people in a warehouse and you have people answering phones and you have uh, different types of roles in your business. Lots of businesses have multiple different class codes that their workers' compensation insurance is based off of. And you want to make sure that yours is right. Because if yours is wrong, when they come in and change the class code, they say, well, no, you said they were an office worker, but they're actually a factory worker. And they adjust that class code, then that could increase your premium and then that's when you get those bills at the end. It's also possible that they could adjust the class code and it could be less expensive and you get a refund. Um, but more often than not, the class code is wrong because someone set it up for the cheaper option because they wanted to see that better number. But then at audit, it gets changed to the more expensive option and then it burns you at that point. So know your employees' class codes. Be straightforward about that with your insurance agent and make sure they're set up. That's number three. And number four, do not underestimate your payroll. I can't emphasize that enough. It is super tempting to guess low about your payroll because when you're looking at the pricing on your workers' comp policy at the beginning of the year, you can tell that if you guess low, the price goes down. And so you're like, oh, well, you know, it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be cheaper for the short term, but it's going to nail you at audit time with a bill. And sometimes it's a big bill. And so, you know, you get that audit bill and it really stinks. So there's absolutely no reason to underestimate your payroll. You really want to, if anything, overestimate your payroll. So you set yourself up to get a refund at the end of the year rather than getting a bill at the end of the year. So don't do it. Don't underestimate. Guessing high is much more likely to create a happy audit for you instead of a sad bill at the end of the year. Okay, uh, what we addressed in this video is real simple. We talked about what is work comp and explained that to you a little bit. We talked about what is an audit, um, the work comp audit at the end of the year. We talked about why and when we do it because, well, they have to, and when is generally about a month after the policy term. And we talked about four ways to make every audit 
super smooth. I hope you feel like you understand the work comp audit in a different way than you did before. Maybe you came into this video and you were like, oh my gosh, I hate work comp. It's the worst. I'm so mad. And hopefully now you may, you may still be mad, but at least you understand why it's set up the way it is and you know what's going to happen in the future so that you can make sure that it doesn't burn you any anymore. So want more from the Shine Insurance page? Well, the first thing I'd love for you to do is click that like button, the thumbs up button right below this video, and then subscribe to the Shine Insurance channel. That's super helpful. Um, some of the stuff we have on the Shine Insurance channel, we've got a new home buyer's guide. If you're interested in buying a home and just want some advice and guidance through the process, we've got a playlist that'll take care of that for you. And then actually an entire a course website behind that at uh, New Home Buyer's Guide dot net um, insurance made simple this is particularly for home and auto insurance uh, we'll walk you right through all those things in our insurance made simple playlist and finally you know if you need workers compensation insurance uh, we are experts in that field we are more than happy to help you and at shineinsurance.com there's also a lot of other blog posts and videos and things that can help you out uh, information that can make your insurance life easier our goal at shine is to change the way you feel about insurance Hopefully that vi this video did a little bit of that, and uh, that's what we're trying to do every day. Okay, so last things as always, the last step in this video is to d subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. And then if you feel like you learned something, you have another business owner that you know who may be able to learn from this information too, please share this video. Okay, until the next time, this is Jeremy. Have a wonderful day.